Every year I plant more edible perennials in our Zone 5 garden. My goal is to gradually transform our garden to a more self-sustaining food forest that produces more and more food with less and less time, effort, and expense. Growing more edible perennials brings us closer to this goal because they produce food year after year with very little maintenance and next to no ongoing expense. At most, our edible perennials require some pruning and an annual application of compost and or mulch. Today I thought I'd show you the more than 30 edible perennials consisting of vegetables, herbs, and fruit that we're growing in our small garden. A garden that has only about 700 square feet of growing space for both annuals and perennials. Let's start with our blackberries. We've had these blackberries for about 25 years and every year they produce a huge amount of fruit for us. They're just starting to flower now and we should start harvesting blackberries in early July. Underneath the blackberries we have Kingstropharia or wine cap mushrooms growing in the wood chip, leaf, and straw mulch. I didn't see these when they first came up and they're a bit past their prime so I'll just let them go so that they can spread their spores and produce more mushrooms. Next we have two new perennials I planted this spring, heritage raspberries and Pixwell gooseberries. Our heritage raspberry is obviously just getting started. We've grown yellow and black raspberries for years, but this is our first red variety. Just a few feet away we have our Pixwell gooseberry. These two new perennials were planted at the same time, and the gooseberry is starting to really take off now the weather is getting nicer. As you can see this area is really a polyculture of perennials. We've got comfrey here for chopping and dropping. And we've got lots of volunteer mustard greens. These are giant red mustards. Now let's take a look at our honeyberries, which we planted in 2013. They first bared fruit last year. Right now they're forming some small green fruit, but hopefully we'll have our first harvest of ripe honeyberries later this month or in early June. Underneath the honeyberries, we're growing apple mint, dandelion, and lemon balm, which are all easy to grow edible perennials. Before moving on, I wanted to show you a perennial that's growing here in the opening of this keyhole raised bed. Just a moment ago, I showed you the wine cap mushrooms underneath our blackberries. Well, here's a great example of how they'll spread all over your garden, as long as you have a growing medium for them. Here they're growing in wood chips and leaves. We now find wine cap mushrooms popping up all over the place. Our next stop is our Asian pear tree, which we planted a few years ago. If you look closely, you can see many little Asian pears forming. Asian pears don't have the typical pear shape. Instead, they're shaped more like apples. Now let's go take a look at a Red Haven peach tree. I only planted this tree last year and I wasn't expecting any fruit yet. But there are many peaches forming along the branches. So I have my fingers crossed. I'm really looking forward to some fresh peaches from the garden. And right over there is another edible perennial next to the fence. It's called lovage. You can eat the leaves like parsley and the stalks like celery. We use it in soups and salads. Now let's take a look at four perennial leafy greens that are growing here in this bed next to the peach tree. First we have French sorrel. French sorrel may be my favorite perennial leafy green. The flavor kind of reminds me of Granny Smith apples. It's got a little bit of a tartness to it. And we enjoy it raw and in French sorrel soup, which is one of our favorites. All I do to maintain the plants is to cut these seed stalks so that the plants will put more energy into producing leaves rather than seeds. We really don't need more plants, we have so many already. And I also make an annual application of compost and mulch, and this is pretty typical for most of our perennials. Right next to this French sorrel is Good King Henry. We eat the leaves and the seed stalks on the Good King Henry plants. The leaves are a little bit tough, but we do eat them raw in mixed green salads. But more often than not, we use them as a spinach substitute in cooked dishes. Good King Henry and French sorrel are two of our earliest perennial crops in the spring especially when grown under double cover here in this low tunnel. Now let's take a look at our sea kale. Sea kale is only hardy to zone 6, but it does fine here in zone 5 under cover. We usually harvest the leaves and eat them like we'd eat kale or collards, but a more gourmet approach is to blanch the shoots in the spring and then harvest the shoots when they're young and serve them like you'd serve asparagus. Now let's take a look at our perennial Sylvetta arugula. Okay, here in the corner of the bed we have our perennial Sylvetta arugula. It's currently being crowded out by a lot of other plants, but it should do fine. Between our perennial arugula and our annual self-sown arugula, we get all the arugula we need without ever having to plant it. Now let's see what perennials we have growing in the hoop house.
Here in the back of the hoop house, we have our most productive perennial leafy green, red vein sorrel. I don't like the flavor as much as the French sorrel, but I do like it enough. And we literally harvest it every month of the year, as long as we protect it in winter under double cover. We usually eat red vein sorrel raw with other greens and mixed green salads. Coming back around the outside of our hoop house, we find another one of our favorite perennials, garlic chives. We add garlic chives to a wide variety of recipes, and they're surprisingly cold hardy. When grown under cover, we harvest garlic chives about nine months out of the year. Coming back around the front of the hoop house, we find another one of our favorite edible perennials, and this one is very special to my wife. My wife's mother gave us our first Egyptian walking onions years ago, and they've been a valued part of our garden ever since. At this time of the year, they form these little bulbets on top. Eventually, the plants will droop over, and the bulbets will plant a new Egyptian walking onion. While we're here, let's take a look at our sunchokes. These flowers will grow to be about 12 feet tall by this fall. After our first frost, I'll cut them back, and we'll start harvesting the tubers. We'll harvest them starting in autumn and ending next spring. And today I'll harvest some because these plants are very invasive and they're attempting to break out of the confines of the raised bed. Let's dig up some sunchokes. Okay, there it is. I knew I'd find it. Okay. There's the culprit, trying to escape. Now we'll have him for dinner. All right. There's another one. Let's see what else we find. Oh, there you are. I can feel you. Yep. Oh, shoot. Yep. No escape for you. It's amazing what wood chip mulch does for the soil, isn't it? Incredible stuff. Okay, I'm back from bringing our sunchoke harvest into the house. Now let's take a look at two very well-known perennials, strawberries and blueberries. I planted two different varieties of blueberries in this bed three years ago. Last year we got a small harvest, and this year we should get a much better harvest from our blueberries. We're also growing tri-star strawberries in this bed, which is an ever-bearing variety. We'll be eating these very soon. And along the front of the bed, we have June-bearing strawberries. I debated whether or not to include the next perennial because we've had mixed results growing it here in zone five. I successfully overwintered tree collards in our hoop house under double cover two winters ago, but this past winter was too cold and the plants didn't make it. Fortunately, I took several cuttings last year and started new plants indoors over the winter. I haven't given up on growing them as perennials though. This winter I'll take extra precautions to see if I can overwinter tree collards here in zone five. Next we have another bed of TriStar strawberries. And also there's another new variety that my wife bought. I'm not sure what the name is, but I'll post it on the screen once I ask her. We're looking forward to fresh strawberries very soon. Okay, the last stop in the backyard is here along the fence where we grow grapes, black raspberries, and yellow raspberries. Unfortunately, I did quite a bit of damage to these plants when I was building my fence. Hey, buddy. The grapes should be fine, but I'm not sure if we'll see any black raspberries or yellow raspberries this year. Hopefully, we'll see them again next year. Now, let's head out to the front yard. All right, I'm on way out front. I remembered I forgot about Oscar's catnip container garden. That's his favorite spot in the garden, isn't it, Oscar? Get it, Oscar. Get it. Good boy. In the front yard garden, we're growing four edible perennials that are pretty enough to pass as ornamentals. First, we have one of our favorite herbs, oregano. Next, we have chives, which are both pretty and delicious. My wife uses this hyssop to make tea. Finally, we're growing yellow sage, another herb that we use regularly in our dishes. I just returned to the backyard garden and I realized I forgot one of our most important perennial vegetables, asparagus. We've been harvesting our purple passion asparagus for the last few weeks and just the other day, I harvested all of our spears to make some delicious asparagus soup. If you look here, you can see we do have more spears coming up. 
And over here, this will give you an example of the size of the asparagus that we're growing. Hey, Oscar, you like asparagus? Good boy. Finally, I thought I'd point out that many of the perennial flowers and ornamentals that we're growing are edible, but I think I'll cover them in a later video. I don't eat them very often, and I know that some of the plants we're growing are poisonous, so I want to make sure that I have my facts straight before talking about edible ornamentals. I hope you enjoyed this look at the more than 30 edible perennials we're growing in our small Zone 5 garden. As we add more and more perennials, we'll get our garden closer to a self-sustaining food forest that produces more and more food but requires less and less time, effort, and expense. If you're a beginning gardener, it's important to know that different perennials grow in different climates. So in selecting what plants to grow in your garden, make sure to select plants that are known to grow well in your area and do well in your plant hardiness zone. Many of you are probably already familiar with perennial fruits and herbs, but if you'd like to learn more about perennial vegetables, please see the link in the description to the Global Inventory of Perennial Vegetables. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos on how to grow a lot of food on a little land without spending much or working harder than you have to.